are you going to know if somebody is preaching the truth, a prophet comes along, what they're saying is true or not, if you don't test them? Mm -hmm. One of the things, in, you know, in Scripture, it talks about the fact that one way you test a prophet is if what he says doesn't come to pass. Well, That's my right. goodness gracious, I see prophets self-called, self-proclaimed. People with business cards that say, prophet on it. Mm -hmm. And they're making all these prophecies and they don't come to pass. What's the consequence of that? Not a thing. Not, not at least at this time on this yeah, planet. I was say, not yet. Not yet. But how do you test the prophets? Well, we talked about the Bereans. When Paul went and preached in Berea, he commended, he talks about, the Bible talks about the fact that these Bereans were more noble-minded than others because they searched the scriptures to see if what Paul was saying was true. When you hear something, do you search the scriptures to see if what they're saying is correct, that it lines up with the word? It says, to the law and to the testimony. If they don't speak according to this, that it's because they have no dawn in them. There's no light in them. That's what the, God spoke to the prophet Isaiah. You're supposed, to you're supposed to test, examine, try all teaching. If this is the first of these programs that you're watching, perhaps you've never heard me say this. Mm -hmm. But have you seen any of the programs before? You have, I'm, I, I have a certain, certain certainty, a certainty that you have heard me say, don't take my word for anything. Test what I say. Test it Amen. against the scripture. If what I'm saying doesn't line up with scripture, turn this off. But if what I'm saying lines up with the word of God, if what I'm saying is the word of God, then you are accountable for it having heard it. You are responsible. But you need to test what I'm saying against the scriptures. Not the way it makes you feel on the inside. Yeah. Not, the way it, you know, not, not the way we look sitting here. You have to judge with a righteous judgment. You have to examine. You have to test. You have to try with a righteousness. And that, the only way that is, is God's word is holy and pure. He uses his word to lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Because it's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Yes, this is our measuring rod. This is our standard. The only one. Mm -hmm. The only one. If you start to test, by the way, you like the way that guy sounds. You like the way that guy talks. You like the way that. You're going to be led astray. You will follow any wolf that comes along dressed like a Christian. Mm -hmm. We are called, and I, I mentioned this earlier, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul talks about that we need to judge sinful activity in the church. Yes. And we need to deal with it. We are not to tolerate it. We need, I said this last week, mm -hmm. we need to become intolerant of sin. We're just having a little fellowship with brothers here in Manchester, England brother and sister, and talking about, you know, the, one of the things that I don't see in the church so very much anymore is a fear of the Lord. Or not being afraid of a, an, un, you know, a God who's waiting for opportunity to do you in. It's a sense of the awesomeness of our God who is a consuming fire. The fear of the Lord, it's the beginning of knowledge, it's the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord, it says in Proverbs 8, is to hate evil, hate sin. We need to become intolerant of sin in the body of Christ, starting with ourselves. You need to be intolerant of sin in your own life. And then what will that do when you find sin in your life? And you know what? It's, it's going to be there. We all, we all, we all fall, fall short, short right, yeah. of the glory of God. But when it's there, we have, it should bring remorse because it should pain us if we hate sin. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7, he said, The very thing I hate, I continue to do. But he hated it. Yes. And that's what led him to an understanding that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That, that's how he starts the next chapter in Romans 8, the most, one of the most beautiful chapters in the entire Bible. Mm -hmm. So when we become intolerant to sin in our own lives, then we are allowed, having removed the log from our own, yes, we need to deal with the sin in others. Jesus said, if you see your brother sin, well, if you... If you see it as sin, you've made a judgment. You have judged that that behavior, that activity, doesn't line up with God's word. It's not done in faith. It's sin. So what are you supposed to do? What are you, you supposed to do? You go to that brother. You go to the brother. You don't go to somebody else and start talking about it. God hates gossip. And if you're speaking to somebody else about the sin rather than the brother that you saw sin, you're gossiping. Mm -hmm. 
And you shouldn't be looking, going around looking for sin no. in everybody's life. No, you don't have you, no. No, no, no. We should be looking for the pure, the holy, the That's blessed. Right. We should be looking for those things. But you know what? Sin becomes obvious to us. So when you see it, yes. and you address it. Because when you have fixed your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author, the finisher, the perfecter of your faith, who is holy, you will recognize unholiness when you encounter it. Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace.